Now, if you look at the top, there are three pictures. And in all of these pictures, the light ray comes from the water, hits the surface and goes into the air. Water has a higher refractive index than air. So the light ray would bend away from the normal. So if the angle in the water is 36 degrees over here, and the light ray still comes out into the air over here, the angle here will be bigger than 36 degrees. As the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction should also increase. So for example, if this one 36 becomes 40, then this line would be even more close to the water surface. Also over here, there is a weak internally reflected ray. So at a certain angle of incidence, the refracted ray bends closer and closer to the water surface until at this exact angle, the refracted ray travels directly along the water surface and the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. This exact angle of incidence is called the critical angle. There is still also a weak internally reflected ray. However, what happens when we increase this angle even more? Does it continue to refract over here? The answer is no. If the angle of incidence continues to increase, the light ray will be reflected internally within the optically denser medium. So if we increase the angle from 50.3, let's say to 70 degrees, then the light would not come out into the air at all. It would only undergo a simple reflection. Therefore, the angle of reflection would be the same as the angle of incidence. And this is known as total internal reflection. So now some definitions. For total internal reflection, when a light ray passes from an optically denser medium to a less dense medium, if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle, the ray would not leave the medium at all, but will be reflected internally within the medium. So you can see here, an incident ray at a high enough angle would not escape the medium at all. It will instead bounce back completely and there will be a strong, totally internally reflected ray. I is equals to R. So for total internal reflection to occur, the following conditions must be satisfied. The light ray must travel from an optically denser medium to a less dense medium. And the angle from the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle. So like we said before, the critical angle is defined as the angle in which the optically denser medium for which the angle of refraction in the less dense medium is 90 degrees. This symbol C, the critical angle, would be an exact fixed number for any medium. For example, plastic would have one critical angle, glass would have another critical angle, and this number doesn't change. So the formula to get total internal reflection is sine C equals to 1 over N, where N is the refractive index. So it's quite simple because there are only two variables, C and n. If you have c, you can find n. If you have n, you can find c. And this is produced by using the definition of refractive index. Refractive index n equals to sine i over sine r. So if the bigger angle is 90 degrees, sine 90 is equal to 1. Therefore, n is equal to 1 over sine c. So let's do a short practice. A simple one would be to find the critical angle for glass, which has a refractive index of 1.5. Please pause the video here and solve the question. Okay, let's go to the answer. n is equal to 1 over sine c. Therefore, if we move the 1 over to the n, it becomes sine c equals to 1 over n. And therefore, if we inverse the sine on both sides, c equals to inverse sine 1 over n. So, subbing in 1.5 into the n, c equals to inverse sine 1 over 1.5. So then we can solve to be 41.8 degrees. The most interesting one is called fiber optics, where these are light pipes which transmit light from one place to another. Images can thus be transferred from one point to another. And this actually is used in telecommunications such as telephone calls, computer data, television pictures, and also it plays a part in a doctor's endoscope to examine the internal organs of patients. As long as the tube is not bent too much, the light ray that goes through the tube will hit this wall. And because this angle over here is more than the critical angle, it will undergo total internal reflection and bounce back. Once it's here, the angle is once again more than the critical angle and it will bounce back. And therefore, the light actually can travel through this tube without exiting the tube and reach the final point. 